Maybe you, like me, grew up as a Christian. You grew up in a Christian household. You went to church. You went to Awana, maybe, midweek Bible study, youth group, all of the above. And maybe you identify as Christian. But today I want to talk about some of the tough things we encounter people as people that have been raised in a Christian household. So when I talk to people on the street and I'm talking about, you know, I want to, I'm doing evangelism usually, I'm asking them about their background beliefs, their spiritual beliefs, how they were raised, that kind of thing. A lot of the time it'll come up that they've maybe been raised as a Christian, right? And then when I ask them, hey, how, how do you get to heaven? What is, what is the point? How do you get there? Um, they'll say, oh, be a good person. And that's pretty common across the board. People say, yeah, just be a good person. You know, Jesus was a cool guy. He preached about love. And, you know, we're just supposed to try to be nice and good people. Eventually, our good will outweigh our bad and we'll go to heaven. Well, there's a big problem with that message because that has been one of the big messages put across, um, you know, Christian culture. Um, a lot of young people, maybe 15 years old onwards, they just became in disinterested with Christianity. They become disinterested with church. You know, church music isn't as cool as secular music and church, you know, Christian movies aren't as cool as secular movies and, and, and the Christian belief isn't as cool as like Buddhism or, or whatever agnosticism or atheism. It's just more cool. You can be good other ways. So they just move to other beliefs. And on the surface, this doesn't sound like a terrible thing because after all, if Christianity is just about being a good person, who's to say that you can't be a good person as a Buddhist and a good person as an atheist and a good person as an agnostic. But the biggest problem is, is that's not what Christianity is about. You see, a couple things have happened here. Not only have we not, as people that have been raised in Christian households, a lot of us have not taken on the faith of our parents. We haven't made it our own. We just kind of tagged along until the point where we decide, look, there's something more cool, more interesting to pay attention to. And also what has happened is actually there hasn't been a clear understanding of what the gospel message truly is and what the Christian message truly is. Because if there was that understanding, then we would say, hey, look, it's not just about being a good person. It's actually about this idea of repentance and faith. It's about Jesus coming to this earth, fully God and fully man, to live a sinless life, a life we could not live, to die on the cross, a death we deserve to die for our sins against God. He died and taking the penalty for our sins against God. We don't talk about sin. We don't talk about repentance. We talk about, oh, you know what? This is how you can live a better life. These are three ways that you can, you know, be, have better, more fulfilling relationships. But we don't talk about the law of God and we don't talk about the gospel. And because we don't talk about that stuff, people are leaving the faith. Young people are leaving the faith because there's nothing to hold on to. If it's just this, you know, be a better person, 10 week plan with some nice Bible verses at the end, that'll make you feel better about yourself. Where's the substance? And another big problem is sometimes, look, people don't end up leaving the faith. They stay in this area of complacency or just apathy with how they were raised. They say, yeah, you know what? I go to church just because it's, you know, it's a good place for community. Or I go to church, yeah, because I like hearing the inspirational messages, but they never take on the faith for themselves. And look, I'm guilty of every single part of this. I'm not excluded from this, but I'm just trying to like let you guys and like just shout it from the rooftops as, as loud as I can that we ought to be clinging to the true gospel and clinging on to the true message of Jesus and, and not stay in this just culture of Christianity, but have it actually inform our lives. Ray Comfort said something amazing one time. I, 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 it really moved me and impacted me. Ray Comfort once gave this analogy, the difference between believing in Jesus and putting our faith in Jesus. Imagine you're in an airplane. You're about to jump out. This is a crazy, scary thing. A lot of people have like jumping out of an airplane or skydiving on their bucket list. And it's very dangerous sometimes. I don't know, depending. But in this case, you actually have a parachute, but it's sitting next to you. And you say, oh, look, I believe that parachute exists. I believe that it could save me. I believe that it is, you know, nice and it, it is great, whatever. But if you're jumping out without putting that parachute on, you're dead, right? And so now what we're called to do is put that parachute on, put Jesus on. And what happens then in that moment when we trust in Jesus, when we repent for our sins, we are justified. This idea of being made right with God. And that's not out of our own doing. It's not like we deserve that. It's not like we work to earn that. No, that's a complete gift of God 
to us. And when we're indwelt with the Holy Spirit after justification, we are then put on this process of sanctification by which we are being made more and more like Jesus. That doesn't mean we don't sin. We definitely do. But it's about direction, not about perfection. And my concern is this is that you may consider yourself a Christian right now. Maybe you've grown up in the church, you've grown up in a Christian family, you've known about this Jesus guy, that's great, that's great. Maybe you even said a prayer one time asking Jesus into your heart, but you haven't truly repented for your sins. You haven't really truly understand understood your sin before God. You haven't truly been humbled by the law of God and then drawn into repentance and faith. That's my concern because I think there are a lot of people out there. There are a lot of people that say, yeah, I like Jesus. Jesus is cool. Jesus is great. But they have these two conflicting ideas like, yeah, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, but I'm also need to be a good person in order to get to heaven. Like that's not true. We, we, we can't be good enough to earn our way to heaven. And also we're not born Christians. Nobody's born a Christian. If somebody says, I've always been a Christian. That's not true. That's not true because it's not just about what family you were born in and what their beliefs were. It's not some group mentality where you can say, oh, you know, my parents believe so. Yeah, that's kind of my thing, too. No, you got to take it on as an individual because ultimately you're going to be accountable before God. Some people say, hey, look, I'm, I'm not that bad. You know, everybody sins. It's no big deal. But think about this. You're standing in front of a judge and you've done some wrong things and you say, hey, look, but there's lots of other criminals out there, judge. Just let me go. It's no big deal. No, he wouldn't be a just judge because he has to prosecute each individual. He doesn't just let you go because that's what everyone else does. No, we're each going to be accountable before God. And that's my hope for you is that you would understand that, that God would draw you to himself into a place of repentance and faith and that you would not stay in just apathy of living in Christian culture or just saying that you're Christian just because that's what all your friends do. But you would truly understand your sin before God and you would come to a place of repentance and faith because ultimately that is the message. That is the most important thing that you will ever hear. It's not, look, this is how you can make more money. It's, this is not how you can have better relationships. It's how can you be made right with the God of the universe? How can you have a relationship with him because he wants a relationship with you? And how can you have eternal life in him? Like it's the most amazing gift ever. The fact that we didn't earn it, but it's a gift anyway. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Pass this video on to a friend who needs to hear it. I think we need this message in our culture nowadays that it's not just enough being a cultural Christian or having our parents be Christian, but we need to take it on ourselves. Subscribe down below because I'm putting out new videos every single Thursday. Um, it is an exciting thing. I love putting out videos. I love making content for you guys. And thank you so much for you who are on the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon. Um, amazing group of people on there that support my mission in spreading the gospel and helping people follow Jesus daily. So if you want to help me help, if you want to help me do that, um, you can sign up down below, sign up to become a daily disciple club member and support me on a monthly basis. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.